Hello and welcome to this short video showing you how to bind a multi protocol radio to two of the most common receivers that I see in the hobby. First is a FR Sky X8R receiver and the second is a little Spectrum compatible. This is a little orange receiver from Hobby King but the principle is exactly the same. Now it seems to be that these kind of radios, this is my Radio Master TX16S, I'll put a link down below if you want to go and look at the series for it. Yeah, these are becoming a lot more popular. But because these radios will talk to pretty much any receiver, it's confusing some pilots, particularly those coming from something like a Spectrum radio where the binding is really, really simple and straightforward. The extra complexity in these powerful radios is causing problems. So let me just go through and very quickly show you the binding process for each of these. But before I get into that, let's go through a couple of basics. So let me just power up the radio. And what you need to be aware of, there's loads of different kinds of this. Radio Master make the TX16S and they're all the same, but there's also things like uh, the jumper radios and others too. So uh, this one has a multi-protocol module internally, and in the bay at the back, I just happen to have my Crossfire module. Now we're not going to use Crossfire for this because we're not talking to a Crossfire receiver and the trick of course is to make sure that the radio is talking the same language or protocol as the receiver. So what we need to do, do the binding process, and the binding process is slightly different for each, is we need to go into the model memory. So we press the model button, press and hold it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will find that there's actually something called internal RF. That's the internal radio frequency stuff. And that's the radio, of this one in particular, that actually has all the settings that we want. And then down here we have an external RF, which at the moment I've got turned off because I'm not using the module that's plugged into the bay at the back. We're not going to use that for this demo. But if I scroll back up, here we go, back into the internal RF. This is where we can pick the kind of protocol or language that we want to use for the receiver. So you can see here that if I select DSM, which is just the, the language, we have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. Now, sometimes I'll pick a protocol like now where the radio will be beeping and that means it's automatically gone into binding mode because some of the protocols for some of the little things that you fly, the kind of toy grade stuff, will automatically want to bind to the radio as soon as it comes up. However, for some of the uh, what I would call you know more mature hobby grade receivers like these, you have to go through a process. You go through it once and then it's set. Now, you don't need to worry too much about this because the radio should be set up from the factory. But the challenge is, is that uh, although you can select DSM, let's select DSM and go over here, you have all these different sub uh, settings for the protocol. So we have 222, uh, we have 211, X22, X11, Auto, and we have all these different options. Now, if the, there's ever an auto option, it's definitely worth trying that because all of these are slightly different dialects of that language, if you want to think of it like that. Now, this is for DSM2, uh, both the 11 and 22 millisecond versions, and DSMX, it will talk all of these. Now, if you want to know whether or not your radio will talk to the receivers that you have, and you know the language that the receiver talks, you can go onto the wiki and have a look and I'll put links down below if you want to go and have a look on there and if you just kind of search within the page for the protocol you're after you'll very easily see whether or not it's supported. So with all of that kind of said let's get into actually binding some receivers. So we're going to bind to this little receiver here. Now this is obviously a spectrum receiver so I'm going to have to use a bind plug. This is what these ones like. Now the bind plug will go into whichever socket has the bind on it. So I'm going to plug that in. That means when next time it's powered it's going to go into bind mode. So I need to grab some kind of 5 volt supply and I need to plug it into one of the other ports. And what you'll see is it immediately start flashing. 
here we go. So that receiver is now in bind. Now, I happen to know that these are DSM-2 compatible and they're 22 milliseconds. Uh, we could choose auto, but I'm going to do is just scroll down. Let's make sure we've got the right one set. Scroll down and hit bind. And you can see something happening. The radio's chirping to say it's in bind mode. And there's weird things happening with the light on the receiver. And when the light goes solid, then it looks like it's done. So we're going to exit out of that. We're going to power off the receiver, unplug the bind plug, and we'll power it back up. Just see whether it, the light comes on and stays solid. kind of <laughs> but that is bound so that is all working and we can check it's working if we plug the receiver into something that will actually show the signals coming out of it so I'm going to use this thing from Toolkit RC this is the M8 this is one of the bits of test equipment that I always have somewhere on my desk uh, it's a great little piece of kit so I'm just going to plug in this there we go Toolkit RC I'm going to plug it into the ppm output that's on the receiver there we go receiver is up i'm going to go into the measurer go into ppm and as i move the controls on the radio there you go you can see them all moving and there we are so that is how you bind a receiver using something like spectrum it isn't particularly tricky but if we want to bind something like a fr sky receiver again it's not super straightforward because fr sky as well as the dsm2 dsmx 11 22 millisecond versions on this we have both the fcc and the eu version we have lots of different options so you need to know what your receivers work using and if you can't bind to it it probably means that it's the wrong protocol so again we're going to go into the radio we're going to press model we're going to scroll down and this time we're going to go off DSM and what we'll do is we'll select the free sky protocol so we're going to keep going until we get to FR sky there we go now with FR sky we actually have FR sky and FR sky uh, version 2 and I always flash mine with version 1 and then we have lots of different options D16, D8, 8 channel D16, V8, the LBT which is the EU version so if you're never sure you can try each of them in turn uh, but you should have an idea which is on your receiver so I'm going to go just for regular good old D16 and we'll get ready to bind again so let me press and hold the failsafe button and let me just plug it in to power it. Make sure I've got the polarity the right way around. And then go into the radio, click bind, hit enter. And now we have the red flashing light and the green light is on, which means we're good. So we'll exit out of that. We'll unplug that and then plug it back into the S bus output it should go green which it has hopefully you can see that on the video kind of uh, and then what we'll do is we will go into S bus settings and now again as I move the controls you can see all of the outputs changing from the receiver so those are the two things you need to be careful of. That's the process. You need to make sure, first of all, that you have selected the multi-protocol module. Sometimes it's going to be internal. Sometimes it's going to be external. Make sure you have the right protocol selected for the receiver. And the other top tip I'll give you is if you are going to bind to a receiver, put the receiver into bind mode first and then click the bind button on the radio. Uh, that tends to work a little bit better. Uh, sometimes the bind process on these radios is quite short and by the time you've got the receiver powered, the radio has come out of bind. So hopefully that helps those of you that were interested in seeing how this is done. 
that's how it's done on things like the free sky and the spectrum and the tip is if you're not sure which protocol is used on either of these if you go into the specifications uh, the manual for whichever receiver you're using it's going to be in there or you can try it trial and error or some of them like the spectrum ones have auto that might actually get it right without you having to play around too much Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.